Leia Healthcare. It's good to live. Proud sponsor of the Real Health Podcast with Carl Henry. Welcome to the Real Health Podcast in association with Leia Healthcare with me, Carl Henry. Folks, I'm delighted, uh, honoured, very happy indeed <laughs> to welcome back, which is a rare thing on the Real Health Podcast, Dr. Kira Kelly into our studio in Independent House here in Talbot Street to chat to us all things walking, about 100 days of walking plan, the momentum that it's gained and what walking has done for her and just how fabulous she is in general. <laughs> Kira Kelly, welcome. Thank you. Back. I feel very honoured to have been asked back, but I'm glad that I can put right the first podcast where I hadn't brushed my hair and that photo has haunted me for about two years. So thank you for having me back. Not at all. So how's life? How are you? Ah, oh, so good. Uh, really good. It's, what is it now? The beginning of January um, and had a little bit of a break at Christmas, which was very nice. And now, I suppose like every other person in the country, you know, you're carrying a few extra pounds. You had the sluggish time. You had the, I certainly did, had all the mince pies and all the Baileys and the wine and all of that. Um and I kind of came into the start of the new year and I thought, I, I need something because I, I'm a kind of a slightly a creature of habit and need a bit of routine. So um, I needed to do something for the start of January to get me back somewhere I wanted to be. And I suppose walking is my thing for doing that. And is that where the 100 days of walking came from? So this is the third year of it. Yeah, this um, is the third year. This is the biggest year. It's been everywhere. Yeah, no, it's, been, it's been huge it's in terms been of promotion. It's fantastic, actually. Um, yeah, it, it, it was never a plan and I never discussed it with anybody and I never, I mean, I was actually on Operation Transformation the first year I did it, but I never talked to them about it. And literally I was sitting at home, I think it was the day before New Year's Eve or something like that, and I was on the couch and I was kind of going, oh, I feel like a, a slug. I'm nearly ready for Christmas to be over and the new year to be over and all that. And I thought, what will I do? And I, I you know, I've done various. I'm not a sporty type at all, as you know. Um, but I used to run and stuff like that a little bit. But I injured myself, Car, loads of times. I hurt my Achilles. Mm -hmm. I hurt my knee. I hurt my hip. I did, you know, all that stuff that I think happens to a lot of people. Um, and I thought, I'm, I'm not really interested in doing that because that put me out of action when I was limping around the place for a few months and that felt bad too. I thought, I'm going to make one small change for myself personally. I'm going to commit to going just for a walk, just a walk, not a run or a jog or anything like that, a walk every day. And then I decided for a hundred days because that seemed like more of a, of a challenge. And the walk has to be at least 30 minutes because that's a decent enough walk. After that, anything is a bonus. And so I put it out on, on Twitter back, this is the third year of it, and I said, listen, I'm going to do this for me. I need a bit of balance. I need something to focus me, you know, and all of that. Anyone want to do it? And hundreds of people did do it. And then we did it again last year and thousands of people did it. And then this year I was laughing. I was nearly putting up the tweet going, you know what's coming? Anyone want to go for a walk? And literally... It's amazing, actually. There are thousands and thousands of people signed up on News Talk, which you can register to be part of it. But equally, there are people who are doing it who are not signed up anywhere. Mm -hmm. And there are thousands of them as well. And it's a really nice, really simple, really small change. And it makes a big difference to, to me and I think hopefully to a lot of other people. It's a fairly hardcore way to mo to keep yourself motivated <laughs> over the course of basically what is three months is the pressure of everyone else doing it, which makes you have to do it, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like saying it in public means you have to do it in a way. Well, maybe it doesn't. You could, you could kind of sink without a trace and not do it. But I'm totally, I've, I've said it. And I've actually been putting up videos every day of my walk mm -hmm. um, and all of that. So... Yes, I am committed to doing it. And we will end, last year we ended on April 10th, but this year's a leap year, so we'll end on April 9th. So it is, that it's just over three months. And to be honest, it's been great for me personally, even aside from, I know the, the great community aspect of it that I, I love is lovely too. But I do always, I don't know why, right? But I always find New Year's Eve and, and facing into the new year in January in the darkness and everything. I always find it a bit deflating. That's just personally, I do. I don't, kind of go, yay, 2020. I kind of go, oh God, here we go again, kind of thing. So to me, having some weird little structure, mm -hmm. right, that makes me get up and go out, doesn't matter if it's hail, rain or shine, doesn't matter if I'm feeling a bit sniffly or fluey or not in good form, I still have to do this thing. It gives me some little scaffolding in my life that I can kind of hang on to. And if everything else is a bit chaotic -y or whatever, I have this. And I find the psychologically the act of putting one foot in front of each other every day does something for me. It does something for my mental health. It does something for my physical health. And it gives me a sense that I'm 
I'm all right. I'm 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 achieving something. I'm in control. There's some bit of me that's that's kind of functional and doing and good things. And and I think the kind of the the Christmas where you're sleeping whenever you want and you're eating whatever you want and you're drinking and you're all out of routine. I find this is a really nice kind of antidote to it. And and I I just kind of need it. And of course, the hardest part is uh, the first ten seconds. Probably. I, I work with a, ch- a chap called Neil O'Brien and if you've ever seen him lecture, he talks about going, telling his clients to go for a 10 second walk. And that's literally the 10 seconds from your front door to the end of your driveway to maybe ha- you know around the corner, that it's that first 10 seconds that if you get to that point, you're like, sure, I'm here now. Sure, might as well keep going, you know. I find the hardest part of my walk is about the four minutes before I start walking at all. Before I go out the front door and I'm trying to get in my coat and it's pretty cold months I'm putting on a hat maybe or gloves or depending on the weather like a raincoat or whatever and I'm kind of getting ready to go out and I kind of go oh here we go. <laughs> but once I'm out and I, I, I walk with people but sometimes I walk on my own and I listen to podcasts like your own and I listen to tunes and I, like, I have a playlist for walking and all that. Once I'm out I'm golden. And, and like literally if I'm walking, once I'm 10 minutes into the walk, I'm so glad I've done it. I'm so relieved. And I'm not kind of going, God, I can't wait to get home. I'm kind of going, oh, this is good now. Now I'm back in that kind of, there's something almost meditative about it, mm-hmm. even though, as I say, I'm listening to really loud music usually in my ears. Um, but the act of walking, the, the, the pushing yourself to do it and then following through and doing it. There's loads of little positives that come, from, apart from the, from the physical benefits, and we can talk about that too, but there's loads of little positives from just saying, I'm going to do this and then doing it. Because then mm-hmm. you feel, yes, I'm achieving what I set out to do. I'm achieving, it's a tiny goal, right? It's not a much, it's, it's, it's a half an yeah, hour. The, the, but it's, the size of the goal is irrelevant. Yeah. It's, it's the achievement yeah. of it. It's the, it's the 1% rule of getting 1% better every day and, yeah. and having those small goals and a 30 minute walk is a perfect. And I do there. feel the benefits in terms of my sleep and my energy and, and all of those things. I, I absolutely do, you know. How do you switch off? Oh, God. Like Generally, because even with this, you go for a free walk, you post your, vid- you post your video on, I follow you online, so I see you posting all the videos. And then there's all the comments and the people are chatting and there's a the hashtag going, of course, at the minute, which is brilliant. And then you're on over that because you're retweeting the rear end out of it. Which is great, but how do you switch off in terms of how do you get to bed? How do, how do you? What's your switch? Well, off actually, tool? it's going to sound really weird. Last <laughs> night I did two things because yesterday I had a really busy day. Right, I was back to back. You you know this stuff, right? So I was I was up in the morning. I had stuff to do, and then I went to work. And then after work, I had various meetings and stuff, and I also had to get a walk in and that stuff. And so I was getting home, and I I sound like a, a leader in Operation Transformation. <laughs> I had actually batch cooked, as in I'd made oh, I'm two impressed. two lots of dinners. The day before yesterday, because yep. I knew yesterday was a very busy day and I knew by the time I got home trying to start cooking. So I then they were I made a spaghetti bolognese and halved it and put kidney beans in the second half, and that was a chili con carne. Like it was it was not rocket science, right? So but 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 I did that so I'd have a bit of time. But I got home and I had to get the cat from the vet. And there was anyway, it was one of those days, and I really did feel I was kind of up to here. I was up to my tonsils. And I did two things last night and they both helped. I'm going to sound like such a nerd. I went to the gym, right? I did go to the gym yeah. and I didn't do anything aerobic really at all. I lifted some weights, which was like, yep. and that makes me feel better. And then no question that it makes me feel better. And then I went home and almost, I was home really early too. I was probably home nine, half nine. And then I went to bed really early and then I read a book and that's what I did. <laughs> and those two things seemed to soothe me, like getting the kind of uh, out there yep. in the gym with the kind of adrenaline and then the kind of nice in my bed with uh, a good book. And today is a better day. Yesterday was a kind of a hard day and today is a better day. Okay. Do so you have anything that stands out, I suppose, from not necessarily from the, the, the latest version of the walking groups, but uh, last year, are there any stories or people online uh, that kind of stand out in there's, particularly? There, or? There, there's been a huge amount of people. And actually, one of the things that stands out is from this year because... Uh, one woman contacted me on social media and said they've set up and, and, and they're around the country now these hundred days of walking Facebook groups and, and, and probably Insta groups and whatever. And people are using the hashtag and posting it, but people are coming together in their communities to walk. And like, you know, this from Operation Transformation, that community uplift is really, really good. And actually somebody said to me, oh, I'm, for three of my hundred days of walking walks, I'm going to do OT walks because they're on three mm-hmm. nights a week in my town and all this. So there's a lovely crossover and it's, it's, it's very nice. But this woman said, we set up a Facebook group and we are all parents who've lost children and we lost them all around the time of birth. So they were like miscarriages, stillbirths, you know, sudden infant deaths, all that kind of really tragic stuff for them. But they've 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 come come together as a group 
and they're dedicating each day that they walk to one of their children. And wow. I have to say, I was very moved by the thought of that. But there is something healing and something meditative in going out into the fresh air and walking. I, 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 I know I sound like a zealot about it, but but there definitely is. There's something in walking that helps and soothes the soul, I think. Um, and I thought that was lovely. And actually, I am hoping to talk to them, maybe get them on the show or go out and meet them or something, because it just struck me as a really beautiful thing for that family, that that group of families who who have been broken in some way by childhood bereavement, which is the worst thing ever, obviously, um, that they're doing it together and they're supporting each other and all that. And I just thought, oh, that was a lovely thing. But I've met tons of people. There's one, uh, a local school, and they've set up a 100 Days of Walking group. And now all the parents, well, lots of the parents are meeting in the morning away, away from the school. And they're walking all these little kids to school oh, wow. for 100 Days of Walking. And they're in these little yellow high-vis jackets and they're really small and they look like ducklings. I'm not joking. <laughs> you. They're only about like, I don't know, three foot tall, these little kids. They must be about four or five. And they're all mooching along the side of the road like a little... Sn- and it's just like, I call them the 100 Days of Walking ducklings because that's what they look like, these little yellow things. And uh, there's loads of cute stories like that. And lots of people... How, who have kind of shared, I'm walking because I need to, because, you know, maybe I'm not in the best place or whatever. People are having those conversations too, which I, which I like as well. Actually, on that, on the high vis thing, something I discovered a couple of months ago, somebody alerted to me on uh, on Instagram, which is the RSA, the Road Safety Authority, will give you a free high vis. Uh-huh. All you have to do is go onto their website and uh, I don't work with them or for them, but I think it's a brilliant initiative, which is rsa.e. And there's a there's a there's a uh, there's a page with you can put your address in and they will post you out a free high vis jacket. Isn't that so brilliant? if you have a walking group yep. or setting one up or a running group, why waste money on the high vis? Get them free from the RSA. The last time we put it up on Instagram, we crashed their website. So uh, so they can blame <laughs> me again if we do. But it's a really good thing. Because yeah. when you're you, oh, for visibility sure. and safety. I have is a high vis, yeah, yeah. um it's not from the RSA, Dublin bus invited me to go and drive a bus. At one no point. I didn't actually end up doing it because the day that they were doing that, I was away. But they wanted me to go and drive a bus and they sent me a high-vis that bus drivers wear and it has a Dublin bus logo and it has my name on it. So I've got a bus <laughs> driver's high-vis, which I'm quite proud of. Um, big shout out to Dublin bus. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you are listening to The Real Health Podcast in association with Leia Healthcare with me, Carl Henry. Um, so let's chat the the benefits then of, of walking and exercise in general in terms of the, physic, the physical and the mental benefits. What do people get when they go out and move a little bit or exercise a bit in the gym or whatever what are they getting from it oh so much Carl and you are, are such an advocate for this yourself but I, I kind of start with the, the the skeleton out first of all you get bone strength because weight bearing exercise particularly for women particularly heading towards the menopause or postmenopausal, we build up as women our, our bone strength to a maximum usually unless you have a very low calcium diet or you're you know maybe underweight or whatever till our 30s but then it kind of plateaus and then it starts to drop weight bearing exercise addresses that so going for a walk is really good for your bones that's the first thing but it's also really good for your muscles it tones them obviously and you look nice and you're you know you're all the fitness and everything but actually particularly for older people who maybe other forms of exercise are more challenging for like they wouldn't do contact sports or what have you walking is really good because if you can make your musculature stronger you maintain your mobility, you maintain your independence, you prevent yourself from being as vulnerable to falling, all that stuff. I sound like I'm addressing this to everybody who's over 70 or something, but there's, <laughs> but there's, but we, we're going to keep going. And and it, and if you have somebody who has arthritis or whatever, mobilizing joints is fantastic and all that stuff too. But then take it kind of internal. It's brilliant for your cardiovascular health. Like we know that, it, you know, it, it, as you would often make people take their heart rate or whatever, it lowers your, your resting heart rate. It lowers your blood pressure. It keeps your weight down. It's not the only thing you'd need to keep your weight down because walking wouldn't necessarily be enough. But it's certainly really good for pumping the heart and using the blood vessels and all that. It's brilliant for your lungs because your lungs are a bit like, in terms of what they do, a, a bellows. I don't know if people know what bellows are anymore. But kind of a, a concertina in and out, air in and out. So you exercise your chest wall and strengthen that. And you exercise your lungs. You you actually get rid of secretions and all that. That might pool in your lungs if you weren't taking exercise. So it's brilliant for your cardiovascular health. So people like who have respiratory problems, walking is fantastic for them. It's really, really good. Um, other good things about it is it's it's really good for your mood. We know particularly that green exercise, so being outdoors, has an added fillip, an added sort of bump to any old other forms of exercise. So getting out in the fresh air and going for a walk gives you that uplift, good for your mood, gives you the endorphins, good for the feelings of positivity. And 
it does have a knock-on effect, obviously, on your general health. So it does reduce all the risks that go with the obesity and the things that, that we come from that end of being immobile. So it does reduce your risk of diabetes and obesity and arthritis and infertility and cancer and all of those things. It's like, to me, walking, it's like, a, you know, they talk about superfoods and that's all a load of old crap, let's be honest. But it's like a super exercise because it's a really low bar. Mm -hmm. you, you can be any age. You can walk from the age of 18 months to the age of 102. So, so everyone can do it. You can walk at your own pace. You can walk as fast or as slow as you want. You can be fat, thin, old, young, fit, unfit, sick, well. You can, you can sort of adapt it to meet your needs. And it's free. Mm -hmm. You go out your front door. Like I don't get in my car and drive to some lovely place and go for a walk. I go out my front door and start walking. And hopefully if I walk for long enough, I end up somewhere nice and then I walk home again. Um, so it's it's the exercise with the least obstacles to achieving it. You don't need a membership. You don't need to pay any money. You need a pair of comfortable shoes. It's instantly accessible when you leave your house and it has massive knock on effect for your physical health, for your mental health. Um, and I just love it. I think it's just this kind of egalitarian exercise that is open to everybody. I sound Sold. like I'm, yeah, I sound like I'm this mad war. I'm like the Pied Piper is what I'm saying. You are. With, without with, the rats, with, maybe. Without, well, yeah, thank, <laughs> thankfully. Um, and this year's 100 Days of Walking seems bigger yeah, than ever bigger. before. Just from watching it online in terms of people taking part, the promo around it, News just the whole thing just seems bigger. When they bigger. put up, they put up a, a promotional photograph the idea was Kira Kelly will walk anywhere. And I was actually, they made me walk on the boardroom board table, table in Communicore. What, what was there was the a board meeting table going about? on. <laughs> and they were it was like, I'll walk anywhere, basically. So I was on the boardroom table. I was in a business suit, but I had a pair of runners on. And I was walking on the boardroom table and they were laughing. And they put that out there and they said, register for 100 days of mm -hmm. walking. And I think within an hour, within an hour of the photo going out, 5,000 people had signed up to it. And, and like, it's gone on from there. So like it literally, but people were looking for something to do, yeah. Carl. I do think there's, there's an element of that at the start of the year that people, they kind of want to make changes and they want that balance, that yin for that yang they've had. Like I love the build up to Christmas. I love the little You're very dress. festive. I am. I yeah. am very festive, yeah, haven't yeah. I? I'm, I'm full of the sparkles and the little dresses and the going out and the meeting everybody and loads of nights out. I, and I had a very busy... November and December in terms of socialising and all that kind of stuff. And it was great. And I loved it. And I do feel differently about the start of the year because it, 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 that's the post-Christmas slump. This is sort of like the opposite to that. So when, when people are ready for that balance, they've had the good times, the party times, they now want to get back to something simpler and more, I don't know, paired back and Basically. healthy maybe. Yeah. Um Walking just seems to me to be the easiest and the most obvious way of doing it. What else is this year going to bring for you? What's your what's your uh, uh, goal list? Is probably the is probably the wrong word. I don't I don't really know because in a way, I'm very content with where I am. You know, I've had a lot of change, <laughs> Carl, in the last number of years, like a serious amount of change, like career, everything changed. So in a way, it's quite nice to not be in motion quite as much this year and that's what I'm kind of hoping for I mean the radio show is my is my daily gig and award winning radio the show the award winning radio show best interactive show in the country yeah <laughs> uh, look the, the radio show is my daily grind and I I love it I absolutely love it I, I, I go in every day I bounce in the door I go what's happening what are we doing today and all that and so I feel very lucky I do want to make time I say this all the time and I, 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 I'm like Groundhog Day. I do want to make more time for writing. I've been trying to do that for a long time, but I feel I'm going to have to try and commit to that in some better way in my head so that it doesn't slide down my list of priorities because uh, it's really easy when you're busy to kind of go, oh, I don't have time for that. But if you put weight on various priorities, you will get everything done. I, I You know, time is almost elastic in my view, but, but I haven't been prioritizing that. So there's that. And then... And then we see, you know, I, I, I've i said this before, that if someone had asked me 10 years ago, where will you be in 10 years time? It wouldn't be here. It would be, I'd be a GP. I'd be foostering around doing whatever I was doing 10 years ago. I didn't see the changes that occurred for me coming. But if someone asked me now, where will you be in 10 years? I would say, I haven't a clue. And I actually haven't a clue because I'm I'm open to the fact that now I understand that 
life isn't always about planning and about goal setting and about things like that. Sometimes it's about rolling with opportunities or going with something and seeing how you feel and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff that I am doing uh, in radio and in television and, and in everything. But if I was going to prioritise one thing that I feel I haven't been getting to, it would be writing. What's the scariest part of what, or is there any part of the stuff that you do that scares you? One of our things for our Real Resolutions episode that we delivered was about getting people to do something every single week or month or whatever. Every couple of months even that scares them. A whole pushing people outside their comfort zones. As people get older, I'm finding it in myself that generally you become in that comfort bubble. Yeah. Fear becomes a bigger thing. It holds people back. Is there anything that freaks yeah. you out? And if so, what? I think a lot of what I would have done when I first went into the media, all of that scared me. Like every single time I went on the radio, say when I would have worked a lot with George Hook, scared me every time. And I was probably quite afraid of him for about 18 months. That I, and I was working with him very regularly and I continued to be afraid of him. Now, having said that, he didn't know that because I'm quite good at mm -hmm. not looking like I'm scared, but I was totally scared. And every time I did anything new, I went on TV or I did whatever the things I was doing, they all scared me. I mean, I remember I went on The Late Late Show and I, I can't even remember doing that show because... I was so scared that I was just saying to myself when I was standing backstage before I, I, I walked out, just try and make it to the chair. Don't just, trip. Yeah, don't trip. <laughs> just, it was as simple as that. Try and put one foot in front of the other, right? So I was, so, I mean, I was, uh, you know, absolutely terrified. And I came off and someone said, how did it go? And I said, no, I can't remember. I don't, it passed in a blur of adrenaline and fear. And, and so I've done lots of things that scare me. Um, I was never ever very physically intrepid, as in I wasn't one for doing all kinds of... Um, sporty, bungee, jumpy, typey things. And they all, the idea of those things scared the bejesus out of me, actually. And then last year I went um, with The Independent and we're obviously in an in independent news and media house here at the moment. But I went and did a travel feature for them where I went to Canada. And in Canada, I had to take five helicopter flights. And I'm actually really scared of the idea of being in a helicopter. And I've always said I'd never get into one. But this was part of the thing. And we went kayaking down a glacier <laughs> and we went hiking under a glacier through an ice cave which was an amazing place to see it was this bright blue it was as blue as your desk is here in front of me um, but it was I did all these things that I honestly swore I would never do and when I was going away I was going I don't know how I'm going to make myself do those things because I'm way too scared I also went to Ethiopia this year I went into refugee camps and while I was there, there was a lot of unrest. There had been people shot and there was, uh, listen, it's an unstable uh, situation. Refugee camps, there's half a million of people in them. They've come from an area of conflict that doesn't just go away when all those people come from the area of conflict and stay in refugee camps. So there was, I was scared there. So I've scared myself, <laughs> scared myself quite a lot. But the More weird thing is... More personal, <laughs> everything's very personal that that, that, that you have fears around. But... No, not really, because a lot of the things I'm scared of, I've already made myself do. Mm. I've, I, I totally get what you're saying, that you start to think, oh, God, I wouldn't mind my comfort zone. From the age of about, oh, I don't know, 35, for the last 10 or so years, I, I threw myself out of my comfort zone. I had a comfort zone. I was sitting there pretty in Greystones in my comfortable surgery. I was a partner. I could have worked there till I was 70 years of age, gotten a carriage clock and gone home. And I, you know, I had a reasonable income. I was 100 yards from my house. You know, I could have lived that life really easily. And my my kids, you know, all it was really easy for me to stay in that place. And I was on top of my game. And then I literally fecked myself out of my comfort zone into doing all these mad things. And so I'm not sure that I, I maybe I'm going to die soon, Carl, because I'm not sure my bucket list has anything left on it. I've been really <laughs> lucky. I've gotten to do a lot of really good things. But I, I would completely endorse the thing about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Because once you do it, the things that scare you become less scary. And then maybe other things become what you want to do. And the, But it does improve your confidence. It improves your self-belief. Uh, it improves your life because your life is more fun and a bit of adventure and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I, I, I weirdly for someone who's generally speaking quite driven, which I am, I'm not sure what I have left that I need to do. I must be I must be about to die. When I die, they'll put out this podcast. And if it's anytime soon, it'll go viral completely, Carl. So 
yay <laughs> or if anyone's listening again I'm sure they can contact you on your radio show give some challenges of stuff to scare you oh um, yeah thanks thanks for that no, where, I, I suppose the reason I asked that question was a lot of people listening in for some of them walking can be scary yeah you know what I mean in terms yeah. of if their re- baseline is really really low and they haven't moved for a couple for a while walking up the stairs yeah can be a real fear factor and it's like they're you know they, they might be in their 40s or the 50s and that becomes a really big thing so actually by by facing your fears and tackling your fears and taking them on everything just kind of grows and, and, and flowers from there I did a leg of the Camino earlier this year and uh there were six of us did it and the other five now I'm not I'm not completely unfit I'm not that unfit but I wouldn't necessarily have been as fit as the rest of the group and I was scared of doing that because we literally power walked the Camino they were fit people and I remember every day I set out feeling nervous and I don't really know nervous of what because if I had have come in a bit later than everyone else it wouldn't have made any difference and it was a very relaxed kind of a group it wasn't that but I do know sometimes we do feel daunted by physical challenges and and, and we feel like running away from them as well and 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 much as we might want to do them in our kind of conscious brain, our subconscious brain is trying to go, no, no, this is too much. And, and, I, and I get that. And I suppose the beauty, the beauty about walking would be that if you are daunted, take it really slowly. The, your first walks don't have to be great big striding out kind of things. They could be, you know, go with what you feel able for mentally. And if that's shuffling along quietly because you feel afraid of something that you don't even understand happening if you go too quickly or go too far. Take it handy in the beginning. You can work up to things and it is like baby steps. So let your first walks be slow. Let your first walks be not too far. That's fine. And then as you grow in confidence in your abilities, then they can they can become different. But yeah, I, I, I think you're right about that, actually. And if people want to join you on your 100 Days Challenge, presumably they can start any time, but where can they find out more about it? It's all through social, isn't it? Yeah, it's all through social. Um, you can go to newstalk.com forward slash 100 days of walking, 100 days, so it's like 100 days of walking. And they can go there and they can register. Um, and then really what it is, is particularly Twitter is very active. The hashtag 100 days of walking is very active. And people are posting, actually I was laughing, I was saying board folders should get on board with this or something because <laughs> people are putting up photos of parts of the country that I've never seen. And they are stunning. I mean, they're beautiful beaches and cliff tops and all that kind of stuff. It's really a gorgeous set of photos are coming in and videos from around the country. But there is something very good. And I see people saying that all the time online. I didn't want to go out for a walk today, but then I saw all your pictures and all your videos and all the other people doing it. And it helped me to do it too. And I actually thought I probably wouldn't do a video every day. I thought I would do a video maybe the first day or two. But then people keep saying, oh, I didn't want to go tonight, but then I saw your video and I felt I should. And so I did. And then I went, oh, I'll just keep doing the videos. Then it's fine. They're like 30 seconds. They're not a big deal. But I do think the the being in it together thing mm-hmm. is very motivating and people seem to really like that. But yeah, you can go on to newstalk.com and there's loads of stuff about it. And what's your Twitter handle if people want to follow you on Twitter? At Kira Kelly Doc. Sorted. Kira Kelly Doc, thank you so much for joining us uh, again on the Real Help Podcast. Thank I you. haven't seen you for young, so it's been no, great to catch up. And thank you so much for coming in. Folks, you are listening to the Real Help Podcast in association with Leia Healthcare with me, Carl Henry. As ever, if you have any questions, guest suggestions, or anything at all, it's realhelp at independent.ie or at Carl Henry PT on Twitter and on Instagram. And don't forget, we have a ratings and review competition still going with five copies of my best selling Healthy Living Handbook to give away. We've had a huge response to it uh, over the last two episodes, so we're going to keep that going till the end of. Of January so just rate and review on the Apple Podcasts and you get to go into the draw I'm going to announce the winners in a couple of weeks time um, get walking get moving join here on our 100 days challenge and you'll be fitter and all the better for it have a great week and we shall see you soon Sloan Leia Healthcare it's good to live Proud sponsor of The Real Health Podcast with Carl Henry.